This is a self-setting hook? Okay, so if something pulls this, whoa, it explodes open, setting the hook in the fish's mouth. I gotta try this. Let's see if this works. I got these spring-loaded hooks from Amazon for pretty cheap. No, actually, I don't even think they were pretty cheap. They were pretty expensive, like $7.99, but I'm not sure. So I got these from Amazon, and um, I saw them, and I was like, I got to try them. Self-setting stuff is really funny to me, especially those self-setting rods we've tried in the past. Those were a lot of fun. Now, let's see if the same thing works for a hook. So here's how it works. You have to set the trap without hooking yourself by setting this pin into this loop right here. The pressure will keep it closed like that. When anything pulls this line, it springs wide out. It springs open, thus setting the hook on the fish automatically. And we're currently trying to figure out like the best way to use this. I haven't seen anyone use this before. So the first way I'm going to try is um, under a bobber, just like this. I'll float it. I've done this with a fly on the end of it and ca caught many fish. Let's see if we can float it with this. When something takes that, it should set itself. But honestly, I think it kind of defeats the purpose of fishing. I like to set the hook. I'm hopeful. I think this might work. I've caught many fish this way under a bobber, right near a tree piling like this. I think this will work. I'm going to give it a few tries. If nothing, I'm going to switch my method. But my goal is to try and catch a fish using this self-setting hook today. Oh, I'm on one. Oh, that's a nice one too. Oh, yeah. Okay. I actually accidentally set the hook myself. I wasn't supposed to. I was supposed to let it set it, but my bobber disappeared. I guess it worked. We're gonna put a bit of the Squiddy Bits tentacles on because they freaking love that. And all you need is the tip, just the tail like that. Between that and the earthworm, oh my gosh, it loves it. There we go. Now I have to set the trap again, which is honestly a big pain in the butt. I could have caught so many more fish if I'm using a different rig. This time I'm not gonna set the hook. I'm just gonna reel it in, just to see if it set it by itself or not. I think I got one on there. Oh no! It definitely got set. Look, it went under, but I don't think it was strong enough to set it. Maybe. Did you see it go under? I saw it go under. Okay, that didn't work. I had to set the trap again. Cast it out again. Oh, it set. Oh. No, it's not setting on it. Something is biting it, but it's not, it's not strong enough to set it on it. Huh. It looks like it's failing so far, because it's definitely going down. Nice okay. Look. It's just a getting to be a pain in the butt to reset and set and reset. There. Okay. Let's try it again. Okay. Oh, there we go. Oh, yeah. It, it set. Look at that. It worked. So the reason why I'm targeting these smaller fish instead of the big stripers is, first of all, stripers is not in season. I'm not allowed to keep those. Not allowed to catch those either. Um, second of all, um, it's either I catch this or I catch catfish. 
and this is one of my favorite meats to harvest itself. So I've been catching a lot of perch because quite frankly I love catching and eating this species of fish. Uh, we're no longer allowed to fish just for fun. That's another major reason. But I've, I hope you guys have been enjoying um, our learning process in, in getting into perch fishing as well. Hey, I got an idea. What if I just left this to float? Right here. And if, if anything bites it, you know, it'll be on the rod. And then I'll fish with my other rod at the same time. Maybe that'll be more helpful. Okay. That might work, but I'm just going to say that you got your one last time when you gave it action. That is true. But I think... You just want to hit it with this? I want to see how fast I can hit them right now. See what kind of fish are even there. See that? You see that? It's so much quicker this way. Oh, and this one's on a fish too. Oh! Oh my gosh. Did you miss that? Yeah, I missed it. Oh my gosh. Okay, now I'm all tangled up. This is a better sized one. Okay. I think, I think this tactic will work. <laughs> it's called juggling two different rods at the same time. <laughs> and I've done this with up to four rods before. <laughs> it works not that well. Okay. So something just bit that when I was just leaving it. Maybe I should try leaving this on the bottom instead of the top. What do you think, Aaron? Even without the bobber? Well, the bobber lets it drift down and gives it action at the same time. Mm. Whoa. Yes. That's another good one. And wait, where's my bobber? Hold on. <laughs> oh, no, it's right there. We're good. That's a good one. And these squiddy bits work so well for this. So I'll get the tentacles, cut them in half just like this. And this way you don't have to use plastic anymore. I have stopped using soft plastics because I can do the same thing with my squiddy bits. So what I'll do is thread it through just like this. Give it a little tail end like that. And I already have worm on here, but both is great together because the worm gets pecked off. And the worm is so gross. Yeah, and Aaron doesn't <laughs> like to handle worm, but Squiddy Bits is really mess free, so I like to use that. I hate the worm. Okay, bobber plus tandem ring. Was right next to the, to the bobber and didn't hit the bobber. It wanted this. I think it wants moving. It wants something moving. See, look at how the squiddy bits will stay on it. Interesting. Twitch your bobber around a little bit. Oh, I'm on one. Whoa! That's the biggest one yet on this one. But then again, I would rather just set the hook. Did you feel it set? No, I didn't feel it set. I, I felt, I mean, I felt this go doop, and then next thing you know, I had a fish on my line. But I had to be so attentive. I had to be with my, my, you know, I had to be with this the whole time. When I was just leaving it out there, there was not getting any bites. I think because these fish want to see a little bit of action. Now, I was thinking about trying to use this for like catfish. But I think this will, the spring is not strong enough to set into a catfish. 
and I could put a bigger hook, but this spring itself is not very strong. What if I made one out of a mouse trap? That would be crazy. Somehow figure that out. Okay, after I set it, let's see how it is without the bobber and I just bring it in slow. What do you guys think? I'm gonna see if I can catch it in different ways. All right, give me your suggestions. How would you fish this? Would you even waste your time with it? Or do you think that you have a good, a good use for this? Okay, this time. I'm gonna bring it in slow. It's a slow retrieve. Well, it came undone already. Because I think it touched the ground. It must must have gotten touched, like hooked onto the ground and set itself on. Interesting. that look okay I don't like using this thing I'm gonna switch back to a, a, a bobber what do you think Aaron bobber seem to be more effective this is catching stuff on the ground and it's getting set it doesn't work on the ground no it does not okay here we go I'm trying this again Oh. What a pain in the butt. Sometimes I wonder why does this product exist? Is that just with this product or all products? This product. It's just such a pain in the butt. What happened? They hit my mouth. It flew. It sprung out and hit me in the mouth. There. Oh my gosh. There. Oh. My. Watch, it'll go down. I don't need to set it, I'll just reel it in slow. Holy crap. <laughs> Loopers. <laughs> Where did my bobber go? I just keep losing track of it. Oh, I want a fish. That one really worked, because I was fishing with the other one at the same time. Look, it swallowed it. Oh no, it really swallowed it. So the, the self-setting part did work. Kind of. It swallowed the whole squiddy bits. Wow, so that worked. I'm gonna do that same thing again. Cast it out, fish with the other one at the same time. And here I was, about to give up on it. <laughs> Sit, oh. Is still a tremendous pain in the butt. <laughs> I have a feeling it's especially a pain in the butt to you right now just because you want to get on the fish. Yeah. That's actually one of the most frustrating parts. I just want to get on the fish, but I think that I figured it out. Cast this one, let the bobber float out. Catch a couple fish on here, the fish will still be on the other bobber rod. Ooh, that's a nice one too. Look at how the squiddy bit stays on like that. 
Where's my bobber? <laughs> Nothing on it. Oh, but it did get set off. Look at that. Ooh. Something did set it off. But it looks like this spring is getting weaker and weaker. You see how it's getting bent like this? Bend it back. Set it again. Let me check the... Oh! <gasps> That's how the spring works. This is my last try with this and then I'm done. I'm stopping to use this. I'm gonna call it soon. If I, if I don't start landing more fish with this thing, so far it's proven to be semi-useful, but not efficient enough for me to continue to come back and keep using it, you know what I mean? Does that make sense? It's all right, but I feel like I'm wasting my time sometimes. Since I am fit, casting it out, leaving it, it gives me it gives me opportunity to fish with the other rod. But I have to keep coming back to this rod and fiddling around with this one. I think I could catch more fish if I just had one rod instead of two. Whoa! Dang! Hey, look at this one. Yeah! Now that's a good eating one. Perfect size. Any bigger than this, I might consider letting it go. But this is a male. You can tell because eggs aren't, you know, flying out of its stomach. It's done spawning too, it looks like. Yes! It's so slippery here. I know. I think it's going to be high slack. Nice one. That was right in here, right? Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, yours hey. is bigger. You double that. Oh, yeah. Hey. Woo. Two at a time. <laughs> Whoa. They're so feisty. I love fighting them. These are cousins to the striped bass. They're less of a perch and more of an actual bass. Oh, you're in a light huh? Holy crap. I put it down. <laughs> this guy was a fighter. Pretty big. But it's so satisfying to catch them on these flies. I tied this one. Yay. My friend gave me a report about six. That is a good fight. Not that big. This is a good average size. I think about nine and a half. <gasps> Look at that. <laughs> We're going to have a laugh about this. Oh, nice fish. You took it on the ball. Get a measurement. Good job. Thanks. Whoa, holy crap, Aaron. Thank you, five news. That was awesome. Here's my conclusion of the self-setting hook. I do not like it because it feels like this is supposed to make my life easier, 
but it just makes it more difficult. Yes, it works sometimes, but most of the time it doesn't really set the hook hard enough. You also have to kind of give it action for it to catch the fish that I'm trying to catch. I tried it on the bottom, it just kept getting stuck. Uh, I don't know, how about from you, I want to hear from you guys. What do you think is the best way to use this? Am I using it wrong? What kind of fish would you use it for? Now, I'm sure this might be useful for some people, but for me, I can't figure it out yet. Why don't you guys comment below if you guys do know a better way of using it? Would you recommend to a friend? I would not recommend this to a friend. I give this two stars. That and that, I think that's being nice too. I like the innovation, but it doesn't work well. You know what did work well was the self-setting rods. Those were cool. Maybe this will be good for small catfish. There we go. That worked right there, you see it? Yep. Still bringing a smile to your face. Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying it doesn't work. I'm saying I would rather use my other gear. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I sacrificed some good fish to try this silly product out. I discovered it does not work. Don't waste your time with it. Uh, that's just my opinion. If you really want to figure it out for yourself, you can order one of these on Amazon, but you make the decision. Let me know if you do like it. Let me know if you do have any other ideas. Here at Hey Skipper, we want to help as many people get on fish as possible. We want to make learning how to fish easy and simple. And we've done this by writing many different eBooks and online, uh, and online resources so that you can learn. Check out our website, HayskipperFishing.com. We've got tons of info on there. We've also got our own homemade bait called Squiddy Bits. We used it to catch so many perch here. Uh, we use it to catch pretty much all sorts of different species of fish, whether you're fishing freshwater or saltwater. There's a, there's a function for Squiddy Bits. Oftentimes, I actually like to use Squiddy Bits to replace my soft plastics. So if you are sick of using soft plastics, Squiddy Bits is a great natural it's a great natural bait and it also has natural scent and action. Give it a try. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you next week.